All right, what's up, everybody? This is episode two of my editing workflow, and I'll just like to go over, uh, you know, basically how I edit my photos and especially car photos. So here we go. Oh yeah, actually, before we begin, I like to let everyone know that I use a tablet. Uh, if you want to get, you know, if you want to be a better photographer or editor or like see yourself doing this in the long run, or if you just want things to be easier, then I recommend getting a tablet and. This is the one I have. It's a Wacom Intuos Pro pen and touch medium tablet. It's the medium one, which it's a little pricey, 350 But, you know, if you invest in yourself, it's going to be with you forever. And I believe it's mandatory that you need this if you want to be a real photographer or edit stuff professionally because there's just some things you can't do with the mouse. All right. Because I know a lot of people just use Lightroom and they add filters and then, you know, fine tune little things here and there. But to actually get deep in there you're gonna need a tablet or you you want to spend like forever on a computer to do one thing um go right on ahead but this is exactly what i use and it helps a lot you don't have to buy this specific brand there's other brands available and also like you don't need it this big you can just get a small one you can get like a bamboo you pick that up at best buy or yeah or if you want just buy this one um i'll have a link below if you want to help me out uh, if you purchase through my link, you'll kind of help me out and, you know, I don't know. I don't even know what they give me, but I have a link. So, yeah, I mean, Wacom tablet, it's amazing. This is what I'm using right now, and it's perfect. All right. So, diving right into it. Uh, from, from you guys joining us from the last episode, we are now o opened in Photoshop from Camera Raw. And I will... Go through the shebangs and uh, see how it is. So this is exactly how it is. This is how everything was started. Um, and like I said before, I wanted to explain this. Here's my, my layout for Photoshop. On the right here is my navigator. It's easy for me to zoom in and out and I could like, you know, fine tune exactly where I want to go. Or you can just hold the space bar and then move uh, your, your click and drag. So you can move in and out really quickly. And then you could also do Control Plus to zoom in and out too, or Control Minus. For you guys using Mac, it's Command. So whenever I use Control, it's usually Command. So things like that won't change too much. So pretty good. All right. So here we go. I'll zoom right back. So like I said, layers are like uh, layers of a cake. So whatever is at the top is what you see first because you're looking from the top down. Um, most people they. Well, let me go over these icons. So this is like your new layer. You know, it's just a new layer or if it's like nothing there. But you can do whatever you want to it and it won't destruct the image. And when, what I mean by that is you can just like make it go away. You can even delete it, whatever. But if you do it on the image, like you paintbrush it, you're stuck. There's nothing you can do. You know, it's called destructive editing. So I'll go right back. So you always uh, you always want to do something on layers. So this one, like for example, I want to put like a black ball, right? I'll put a black ball here for some reason. Boom. And then if you're going to be a good photographer, you want to uh, name your stuff. Especially if you're going to hand it off to someone else and have them finish up your work or have them... Or if you work at a big company and you take your photos, you do your work, you do a comp. It's called a comp. And then you, you bringing it to the next person who finalizes things and they would like to see everything, you know, in order, organized that way, you know, to be professional. So we'll get rid of that. So that's basically what a new layer is. You can do tons of stuff. There's so many things you can do. It's like countless. Um, so exam, say we have three balls, one in all layers. And then this right here is your group icon, right? I'll drag this to the top so you can see. And, okay, say you want to move your balls, you know, all to the top or something, right? Like you move it, you click the right ball, you move it here, you know, oh, man, I got to get this guy too. It's, it'll take forever, right? I mean, when you could have just, you know, I'll go, go, you know, I'll just backtrack. Oops. If you hold Control, Alt, and Z, you can, like, go back. And it goes back to your history. You could, Or you could just click your history. All right, so you have them there. Here's your group. You can put them all, highlight these three, click, you know, drag them inside group one. Now they're all inside a folder. So the cool thing about that is not only are they organized, 
page for black balls. But you can drag the folder, which drags the whole thing. You see that? That is pretty cool, right? So, I mean, right, what, do I, what am I going to use this for? I mean, you can use this for text, titles, or, like, effects. You name it, man. So, it's a really powerful tool. They're all powerful tools. So, but, yeah, I'm going to get rid of that. So, the next big one are adjustment layers. So, these are layers also, but they have, like, properties to adjust your image. So, like, I mean, they're kind of, like, self-explanatory, but I'll, I'll put a few in. So, I'll put uh, Vibrance. Okay, so here's your your vibrance pops up right here. So you can add it a little bit more. You can't really see it. If, in, if I do the extremes all the way right and all the way down, you know, you can see it. The vibe and saturation is kind of there too. You see that? So people ask, well, what, what the heck is saturation and what is vibrance? Don't they do the same thing? Not really. Saturation just kind of does like a general feel. Like it brings up all the colors of that. You know, like the red arrow is up. This blue is super blue. You know, everything is up. Where Vibrance, it kind of calculates things. So if you bring this all the way up, you see how the red is not completely red and the blue is not. It's still good. I mean, a lot. 100 is a lot. Don't get me wrong. But it's not as heavily saturated as saturation. It's kind of like a smart saturation. Like the computer thinks about it. It's, it's an amazing tool. So see, if it, even if I go all the way down, there's still blue when if I use saturation go all the way down it's black and white so that's like the best way to explain it so yeah so that's what vibrance is and let's, let's just say we add vibrance to like 26 all right and so what's the one other thing so you think it's a little too dark right so let's say exposure right like let's bring it up just a tad boom there it is exposure and like I said you these are all layers, so you only see from the top and bottom, or they won't destruct the image. Okay. And then these white boxes right here, these are called masks. But we will go over that through another time because that's like a whole different ball game. So for right now, we're just looking at vibrance, exposure, and then like let's just say you want to add some contrast to it. All right. Boom. Just like that. And look at and if you hold alt and you click on the eye, the bottom eye. Your original one it'll show what you have done so far see toggling it pretty nice huh so that's what that is and these are layers and like I said you can always put them in folders and then I'll call these adjustments sweet and you can hide it so it looks nice so yeah, hopefully you guys understand layers, and these are the three I would work with, and then obviously a trash can. This right here is called a masking, and we will add that layer. Uh, we will add that later. So these are basically what you want to focus on and see where you're at. Okay. And that's it for layers. Um, tune in for episode three, where we will actually learn about masks. And from there, we'll start editing for reals. And here we go. All right. See you guys in a bit. And oh, like always, like and subscribe if you like this stuff. Uh, and our Patreon is also linked below if you guys want to help out, um, support us. That'll be cool. And yeah, we'll see you guys in the next episode. Take care.